Hey guys, it's Anthony with The Rag Company and welcome to Wash Wednesday. In today's video, we have Noel and what kind of car do we have here? We have a 2019 Civic Sport. All right, guys, so Noel, you brought an awesome car here. I'm a fan of Hondas myself, and I also have a Civic, so I guess these are uh, near and dear to my heart. So um, today we're gonna be doing a rinseless wash on the car. Have you ever done a rinseless wash? I have not. All right, so be fully open and honest, how do you typically wash this car? I usually just take it to a car wash and do like a tunnel wash. All right, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that because today we're gonna show you how uh, you can wash your car probably just as fast. Maybe it might take a little bit longer, but it'll ultimately be safer, right? So uh, typically with tunnel washes, if they're a brush wash, they are going to induce marring. They're gonna do some micro swirls. And uh, I'm gonna point some swirls out to you so you kind of see what I'm talking about because once you see them, they can't be unseen. Are you ready to see that? Let's do it. Okay, all right. So. We're gonna show them that here in just a second, but ultimately, uh, rinseless wash today. Uh, we're gonna clean up the wheels, clean up the tires, um, and then obviously just kind of get to know this car a little bit more. All right, Noel, so I'm gonna be showing you the difference between a swirl and a squirrel. Interesting. So getting into it, I'm gonna be showing you this with a scan grip, uh, a scan grip light match tool. So basically what this does is it replicates the sun. So uh, a swirl is typically induced from improper washing, you know, wiping the car wrong, dry wiping, using things like California dusters and all sorts of other stuff like that. And so uh, once you see this, it can't be unseen. So here we go. So taking this light here, so you're gonna be looking at your, you know, kind of focusing on the light and then what's surrounding that, right? So you can kind of see it looks like a bunch of spider webs. Right. Right? So what those are, that's, that's marring, that's swirling, and that's all stuff done through improper washing. Now, fun fact though, is that most of these cars, brand new, come with those swirls already installed, right? Especially on black paint, um, it's typically very visible. You know, it's very easy to see and very easy to spot. So um, it's not like it's something that you necessarily did, but taking it through a tunnel wash definitely isn't going to improve that. So typically touchless washes are gonna use stronger chemicals to clean the car, but aren't gonna actually touch them, right? Whereas a brush wash is actually going to be physically touching the car, right? It's gonna be abrading the surface to remove the dirt and things like that. And so uh, typically with that, you are going to start to see these swirls over and over again. Now, how can these be fixed? Uh, simply polishing the car, right? So whether it's machine polishing or hand polishing, you can remove those. The hardest thing though is on a black car, swirls are always gonna be an issue. It's gonna be a struggle throughout the lifetime of owning a car like this. Um, so typically white will hide those pretty well, silver will hide them pretty well. Um, other, other lighter colors like that will hide them pretty well, but anything darker, you're definitely gonna see them out in the sunlight. So um, this is just an idea and just kind of like an education session on, on what those are, right? Some people will have them in the car, don't care at all, right? but improving upon those, removing those, it is going to help with the clarity, the gloss, how much reflection that you get off the car. And you can already tell this car is shiny, but imagine how much shinier it would be after you polished it, right? It would be like wicked. It would be crazy, like a total mirror finish. But we're not gonna be tackling that today. Well, I'm just gonna be showing you how to wash the car properly. So uh, we have a bucket over there with some O&R and some sprayer, so let's go grab them. So I'm gonna hand you that there. And so how this is gonna work, we're gonna pump them up and we're gonna be rinsing from top to bottom. So we're gonna start on the roof, rinse it downward because the way it kind of works is your top areas of your car are going to be technically going to be cleaner than your lower areas, right? Because this is closer to the ground and this we're going to pick up all the stuff from the road. Up top is going to be cleaner, so we want to rinse it downward if that makes sense. So give it a good pump up, test it out, do a little, do a little test shot. It's working. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rinse from top to bottom. Now we're gonna come over here and kind of show you how this is gonna work with the, with the whole bucket and the, uh, the mitt situation. So you said you wanted blue, right? Yes, sir. All right, so coming over here, we're gonna take this, uh, this mitt and in the bottom here, we have what's called a grit guard, right? And the guard is basically there to help prevent contamination or dirt from coming back up into the mitt. So it kind of locks all the dirt down below once you rinse it out. So for this, you can put your hand in the mitt if you like it. I'm more one of those guys where I like to tuck the cuff and use it like that. 
however, there's no right or wrong, um, but basically you have two sides to the mitt, so try to utilize both of them. So what I'll typically do is, I'll use my green one here as an example. I'll tuck my mitt, because I like to do it like that. Squeeze out the product where it's just kind of dripping a little bit, right? We don't want it completely soaked. So what I'm gonna do is come here, and I'm going to knock out this fender. I'm gonna work the top area, work it in, flip the mitt to the other side, and then I'll kind of work downward, right? So now I've knocked out that whole fender there that is clean and ready to go, and then I'll dunk it back in the solution. Kind of, you know, old school, like you're washing clothes in a bucket. And then from there, I released a lot of that dirt and I can continue on with the rest of the car. All so right. it's pretty simple. So we're gonna do one panel at a time. So once you knock out a door, go back in the bucket, squeeze it out, so on and so forth. Rin rinse and repeat. And top to bottom. Top to bottom, exactly, yep, you're, you're, you're on it. So I'm gonna go around to the passenger side of the car and I'll have you do the driver's side. All right. So now it's, but it's time to kind of start talking about this car. So give me some background. What made you wanna get this car? You know, did, you know, what kind of made you, uh, did you like Hondas previously? Did you kind of like them for reliability? Kind of give me some background information on this car. Yeah, so I graduated Boise State in May of last year of 2019. Okay. And, uh, I was getting ready to apply to medical school and my parents asked me what I wanted for graduation and I jokingly said a car because we're on a tight budget. Yeah. And they said no, but absolutely we can do that. So I started looking into it and I really liked Civics because they have this like aggressive look from the front. Well, especially on these newer models. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. And um, they're pretty reliable economically. I mean, yep. this is a 2.4 uh, liter um, four cylinder engine so yeah. it's pretty good on gas and it's also it's the sport trim so it comes with uh with the remote start remote Ooh, entry all yeah the fancy stuff all the fancy getting. stuff apple carplay already pre-installed dang baller and okay absolutely I like it. so i was looking for the package deal that way and yeah. this seemed to be the best especially for idaho weather where it snows and it's really cold you can just start it from your room and wait for it to warm up dude that's that's the way to do it so um, so Gabe, our, uh, one of our uh, producers here helping out, kind of told us an interesting story. So he said that your family actually um, uh, basically immigrated over here from where? Iraq. Wow, okay, okay. And how long ago was that? Um, so back in 2007, we're a Catholic family that grew up in a Muslim country, basically. We were persecuted for our religion all the time. Oh, geez. Um, and because we, spe especially because we worked uh, in in church pretty closely yeah, yeah. with our priest and everybody and our priest was actually assassinated in 2006 and then Holy they started crap. coming after my dad no way yep. okay so, so you guys wanted to get the heck out of there right, right yeah. yeah and we so we decided to leave in 2007 and then we moved to actually syria first okay. and lived there for three years from wow. 2007 till 2010 and then yeah my family moved here to boise in 2010 as refugees Without Dude. my dad initially, and then he Holy followed us in 2012. That's crazy, right? I mean, like to think about all the risks that you kind of have to take with it, pretty much everything involving that process. But you know, you, your your whole family is pretty much here now in Boise. Yep, my whole family is here. Gotcha. So you pretty much guys, you guys had to pretty much start from the ground up, though, right? You know. Absolutely. So everything from kind of you know getting jobs, you know, getting a house, getting cars, and all that. So being able to do that in such a short period of time. Right. And then like you said, you know, when, when your parents asked you, you know, what do you want for graduation? You said a car, you knew that probably wasn't super realistic, right? Right. right. So the fact that it happened and you guys are doing so well, that's crazy. And, and you're carrying it on because you're going to medical school, correct? Yeah, so that's, that's the extra caveat is that all of us work, all of us study as well. All th I have two older brothers and the oldest is in IT actually. He's finishing a master's in cybersecurity right now. Oh wow. Um, my middle brother is done and he works uh, in Citibank. He has a degree in political science and then there's me who decided to do s the other part of science and get a biology degree instead. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to medical school at the University of Washington. Dang in man. The fall. So do you <laughs> You guys made a lot of ground in a short period of time. We then. did, we did. But like you said, there was a lot of sacrifices to be made, but they were worth it. Jeez, that's crazy. So um, you're gonna be going to med school and what's the plan in terms of, you know, what are you wanting to specialize in? Well, that's definitely, there's a lot of options because depending what you specialize in kind of depends on 
how you do on your license examinations. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so number one pick is definitely neurosurgery. I've always been interested in the nervous system since I was a, in high school, really. Yeah. And I've been doing neuroscience research at Boise State um, in an Alzheimer's lab for the last two and a half years. Wow. Okay. So that's the top pick, but I'm also open to like emergency medicine, internal medicine, or family practice as well. Cool, man. I mean, that's you're right you have a lot of options there and stuff and so but that's that's crazy I mean that whole story really is super interesting because I mean I mean we get it we get a lot of we get a lot of refugees here in Boise right and a lot of these guys you know they have to kind of um, you know build their life of their own right they have they have to start somewhere and so some people will kind of you know get into a trade some people will get a job immediately but in your case you know through education you know it seems like that's worked really really well for your family right absolutely and then it also comes down to this like you you know, as a, as a refugee and as you grow, and especially for me, I moved here when I was 13. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always reflect on my experiences back home and yeah. it's like the healthcare system was pretty bad. So now I feel like it's my duty to help the people here that are more in need and improve upon that. Yeah. Right, and, and fill that desire because I can't go back home and help those people. But if I can do it here, then that would fulfill that desire of giving back to the community that helped raise me. Oh, dude, absolutely. I totally agree. And what's funny is I was actually telling you this before before we jumped on camera, but um, but I was saying how my, so you, you can't tell based on how light my skin is, but my mom's side of the family is all Assyrian, right? right. And so Assyrians were, it's a kind of a combination of that, of that area, right? Between Iraq, Iran, you know, Turkey and all of that. And so that was kind of very old, old, um, I don't even know how you call the country at that point or yeah. what it was, yeah. but it's super old school. But my mom is, is half Assyrian, so she's really tan, really dark, and people always think is she Native American, and she tells people, oh, I'm Assyrian, and they're like, what is, what is that actually? And so it is, it is really cool. We're actually talking about the food and how much <laughs> I like the food from that region. It's super, super good. But do you ever have any plans on going back over there? Do you have anybody that you'd ever want to see going back? Um, luckily f for me, there's uh, in terms of family and extended family, there's good and bad news. The good news is that there, most of them, um, almost all of my extended family are actually out of the country at, that, oh, at this point. Okay. But the bad news is that they're all scattered all around the world. So some of us are here in the U.S., most of us are actually in Europe. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of going back, no, not really. I have nothing to go back to. I think I can just build a life here in Idaho into the Treasure Valley after school. Absolutely. It's kind of the plan. Dude, I, in Idaho, so what do you think of Idaho? Because you said you've been here since you were a kid. Did you find that it was pretty easy to kind of acclimate to this area? Well, I was here when I was 13, so I would say that was like the most trickiest age. Yeah, okay, well, thir middle school is pretty much, it's a hard time for anybody, man. I, I did not have the best time in middle school, so I can, I can imagine that it was probably pretty hard to, to get used to. You know, in terms of getting acclimated, it wasn't easy in the beginning because it was a huge culture shock. Yeah. And I was the kid who got bullied because I barely knew how American culture worked. And <laughs> okay, I had to yeah. learn that. Yeah. Um, and people made fun of me for the way I spoke, the grammar mistakes that I made. Well, that's when you say, look at me now, man. This guy, he's speaking perfect English here. You know, he'll probably be teaching English to you know, somebody at some point. So, yeah. but that's crazy. Okay. It's actually always funny when people are like, how do you spell this word, Noel? I'm like, I'm not the one that was born in this country. <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> you, to be you. <laughs> you should know how to spell this word. Right, right. So, but eventually, I mean, you just got to learn to live in two different oceans, man. Yeah. The cultures are different. So when you're around your family, you got to be able to acclimate to that environment. And when you're around your American friends, you got to acclimate to that environment as well. All right. So we just finished washing this, right? That was how easy it was, right? Once you get good at it, you can be done with this in 10, 15 minutes, right? Perfect. So it's a pretty fast process. Now, one thing that I like to do, right? Because certain areas, right? Depending on what time of the day you're doing this or how, what the temps are, you know, certain areas will start to dry, right? right? Don't worry about it. You know, what's on the surface right now is technically a polymer. So you wouldn't get a water spot. You get, a, it's called a polymer spot that just simply wipes off. But what I like to do just to kind of make the drying experience easier is I kind of like just to re-soak the area one more time, just a little bit, nothing crazy, but just to get some fluid on the surface where there's any dry spots of anything. But for the most part, I think we're pretty good. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some drying towels. And I'm gonna show you how to dry your car. I'm using, it's called a drying aid. All right, so time to dry the car off. So uh, we're gonna be using the Liquidator today, which is the rag company's uh, kind of latest drying towel that we brought to the lineup. It's a 7030 blend, really, really nice. Uh, you can tell it's, it's heavy, right? Yeah. It's yeah. got some weight to it, it's got some flop to it but we're gonna be using PNS bead maker as a drying aid. So this is what I was kind of telling you about before. It's gonna make the drying process super slick and it's also gonna add some protection to the car. So how this works is I'm gonna take a panel that's already been cleaned here and I'm going to spray some of that sauce on there. And with bead maker, you can do a heavy coat if you want for the first time. We're just gonna kind of do like a moderate coat. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our towel here and simply dry that product into the surface. Flip the towel one more time go back over it, and that's it. I mean, and now come take it back your hand here and take a feel and feel how sm smooth that feels. Oh yeah. Right, that's like butter. That's it, that's it man. I mean, that's pretty much as easy as it gets. And so it feels smooth, it's already glossier, um, and after about eight hours or so, this protection is gonna even harden even more, so you're gonna get more protection, a better look, a better feel, um, so the product does even get better with time. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray down this side of the car for you. And we can do it on the windows, the trim, pretty much, I mean, literally everything. The, 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 the thing, the saying that we have about bead maker is um, you can put that shit on everything, right? Yep. We're gonna have to bleep that out, obviously, but you can put this shit on literally, you can put it on, you can put it on your car, you can put it on your countertops, you can put it on your stainless steel fridge, you can put it on your windows at home. I mean, you're shitting everywhere. I mean, you're putting shit on pretty much all the stuff, right? Okay. Bleeping all this stuff out, of course. So. Going through, doing our heavy coat. So you're good for pretty much half the car here, man. So just dry that in, enjoy the process, enjoy the, the sense and sights of bead maker. Yeah, you, like you're right, say. it does feel like butter. Doesn't it feel good? It's very smooth. Alright guys, so Noel, I'm going to show you how to clean your wheel here. So we have it up on the lift to make things easy. We're really spoiled by this thing and we like to use it whenever we can and for wheel cleaning it's pretty much ideal. So I've placed a temporary bucket underneath here and by bucket I mean it's just a big trash can so to kind of help with the drip, right? As the kids say. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our multi-sprayer just like before, right? We're going to do a pre-spray. So. Go ahead and spray the wheel down. This is just like how you do with a hose. Yeah, go ahead and knock that wheel out. Perfect. Cool, and then from there, in this other sprayer, we actually have a wheel cleaner, and this is called Brake Buster here. Um, it's in the multi-sprayer. This is a product that can foam, but we don't wanna make too much of a mess because we already obviously cleaned the car. So I'm just going to do a little spray here and get the product on there. And what this is gonna to start to do is break down the brake dust, break down the grime, the dirt, all that stuff from the surface. And so it's a wheel and tire cleaner, so it doesn't hurt it if you hit the tires as well. So go ahead and give that a spray there. There you go, you're done. And we can just walk away and this is gonna clean itself, right? Nope, okay. You wish. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab one of these black towels here. This is called the Creature Edgeless. And I'm a big fan of just using towels on cleaning wheels. I think I'm faster this way. Brushes are great, but they don't get all the nooks and crannies. So take my towel here, and I'm just going to begin wiping down the face of the wheel. Now, another reason why you might want to use a towel is because these have kind of that gloss black finish to them, right next to that kind of that aluminum look. And that black finish can scratch extremely, extremely easily. And so um, using a towel will kind of prevent that, especially on delicate surfaces. So basically going in through here, Cleaning the whole face, one spoke by one spoke. We are almost, almost done. 
Or what about the interior, Anthony? Of the wheel? Yeah. So, great question. So this is where you could also hit, um, it's called the barrel is what it's called, right? Interior close enough though, we'll take it, right? So how this would work is if we wanted to hit the barrel of the wheel, we'll grab our sprayer again. And now that you can rotate these wheels, I'm gonna kinda just shoot some product into the back of that, get it to where it's kinda covered. And there you go. So at that point, you can let the product soak and then take our towel again now there is fancy brushes that can get into the barrels of the wheels. In this case, we can get our hands back there, which is great. So what I'm gonna do this time, normally I'd go through the front of the wheel and wipe out the barrels that way, right? It's being spoiled by the lift. I'm gonna be smarter than the lift and I'm gonna come through the back side and just clean it like this. All right, so at this point, the wheel is cleaned technically, right? The product is still on there, but we, so we need to rinse that off. So using that same O&R product before that we were using, we're just gonna rinse this you can rinse out the barrels if you want to rinse out the barrels. And there you go. So same process as before, same concept, right? Remember how we used a drying aid on the paint, right? We use bead maker on the paint, we also use it on the wheels. So for this, we're gonna spray a pretty liberal amount. Make sure you don't wanna to spray too much on the tires, this might be a slick ride. So get it all over the face of the wheel there. And then we're gonna take, this is called a Spectrum 420 is what this is. Yeah, also in black, just like the creature. And we're just gonna dry it in. So same process as before, take your towel, start drying it in. And what this is gonna do is this is going to leave your wheels protected, right? So it's going to uh, attract less dust because it's an anti-static uh, uh, spray sealant. And uh, so hopefully your wheels will stay cleaner longer with this setup. So um, that's pretty much it. So I th say grab this guy right here, go ahead and rinse your wheel down. There's another drying towel there and you can bead maker it and uh, knock it out. Yeah, cleaning these wheels is not the most not, fun not the most thing fun, to. Right? When it's in the, the air, spokes like, are pretty tight. It, it yeah. makes it pretty easy. Oh yeah, for sure. But like, obviously, every other spoke, they're really like, the they're just the window in between is really tight, so it makes it hard to reach inside. Yep. And what you can do is you can take your drying towel and just do a quick ring around the tire, and just to knock off some of that moisture off the tire there, and then kind of prep it for the dressing. Now you could also scrub the tires too, but these are actually pretty clean. So we're just going to dress them. All right, so come check out the face of this wheel. Feel that really quick. Just kind of rub your hand across that. It's pretty smooth. Dude, it's, it's, it's feeling like glass. It feels super, super good. So um, now the best way to complement, obviously your clean wheels are obviously going to be um, some dressed tires. And so uh, we're gonna be using PNS Shine All. What I like about it, it's water-based dressing. It's not going to turn brown, right? Like a lot of other dressings will. Um, and it's also kind of gives it a nice, just a deeper look, right? It's not shiny. It's not super glossy like a glazed donut, but it's just a deeper, richer look. So for this, all we want to do is give the bottle a good shake, a couple sprays into our applicator here, and then we are going to just begin working it around. So, um, I mean, honestly, that amount that I just used should be able to cover the whole tire. And what you can do is you can do a couple layers. So if like this right now looks good to you, you can call it good and you can let it go. Um, you could also just add a little bit more and kind of build it up to where there's just a little bit more shine. Like I said, this isn't like shiny, shiny, it's just deeper. Right. And if you hit your wheel, it's not a big deal because it wipes right off. It's not meant to stick to wheels, it's meant to stick to tires. And so from there, if I want to, I'll grab my towel Kind of go around the outside if I touched it with the applicator at all and call it good. But I mean, coming from a distance here, that looks pretty dang good. Yeah. I think it looks yeah. pretty awesome. So cool, man. We'll continue on with your wheel, knock out these other two on the other side, and we'll be done. All right, sounds good. All right, guys, and that is a wrap. So the car is back on the ground. You have wheels cleaned, you have paint protected, you have it looking glossier, shinier, and deeper and darker looking than way before. So what do you think? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I mean, it looks like I just drove it out of the dealership right now. I mean, it's, it looks 
pretty clean, pretty glossy, like you said, shining. Um, and I think the whatever products you guys use work like magic. See, we didn't even tell him to say that, right? Normally you think this is scripted straight from his mouth, right? Okay, well, I'll pay you later. All right, sounds okay. good. Yeah. Anyway, so glad this all worked out. So what was your favorite product out of everything we used? Honestly, I liked um, that, I forget the what name. Co what color was it? it? It was one of the smaller bottles small that we bottles? used, that we used the small sponge on the tires. Okay, yeah. so the tire dressing, okay, yeah, so, so the shine all, okay, nice, yeah. Cause that, I mean, that really set off yeah. these tires. It makes them look really deep and dark um, and kind of like new again. And so um, that'll last for a while too. So you'll probably get a couple weeks out of that. And so you'll be able to uh, kind of enjoy the, the darker, deeper look. Um, but overall though, rinseless wash, pretty easy though, right? Pretty for your easy, first time. yep, yep, pretty yeah. easy. And definitely comes in really handy, especially with move, moving out of town and you know, Heck living yeah. in an apartment complex, it's, it's gonna come in pretty handy. And that's all you, all you need is a bucket of water, you need a sprayer, you need a couple products there and you can go knock this out and people are gonna think you're crazy for doing that in your apartment complex, but you're gonna say, well, my car is cleaner than yours, man. And then they're gonna say, my next, right? And that's every neighbor ever, you know, when yeah. washing your car, but it is what it is. So Noel, thank you so much, man. Thanks, I really Anthony. appreciate you coming on the show uh, and bringing us your car. And so hopefully you guys watching this learned something, uh, got, you know, took something away from this, whether it was rinseless washing, you know, dressing tires, cleaning wheels, you name it. Uh, that's what we like to do here on Wash Wednesday. So as always, guys, if you guys like this video, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rag Company.